Good morning. Welcome to Shofar Mountain. I'm PJ. So I got an email today from a Jarl Dave, we'll call him, uh, from my Patreon channel. And I thought instead of fat fingering, fat thumbing on my phone and answer, I would shoot a video. So it's for Dave, but it's I think it will interest many of y'all as well. So let me see. Let me read it to you here. Quick question. Your group observes Torah. Is this to become closer with God? As a saved Christian myself, I know that I am saved by grace and not by works. Many times I have wanted to follow the law, but some of that law also includes not wearing shirts of mixed fabric, etc. So why follow some of it if I cannot follow all of it, especially when it doesn't affect my salvation? That's an assumption there, Dave. As a very ex-Mormon legalistic, religions kind of rub the wrong way, I concur. I have often wanted to grow a beard as a personal symbol of faith, but then my pride stops me because it will show my gray. Haha, <laughs> this makes me think I should do even to conquer this vain part of my being. Okay, so that, that's all you need to know from Jarl Dave. So, your group observes, in quotation marks, Torah. To be, do you do that to become closer to God? Uh, no. And observe, oh, okay, I'll take it for what it's worth. Here's the deal. We try to keep Torah. What is Torah, some of you may ask? Torah is basically the law. Um, it's also the first five books of the Bible, you know, Genesis through Deuteronomy is also called Torah. And people have gone through and pulled out all the requirements in those first five books. And there's 613 of them. So there's 613 laws. <clears throat> um, do we do this to be closer to God? No. Um, and I'm shooting this off the cuff. I don't have sermon notes prepared or anything like that, but here's the deal. Uh, and we call God mostly Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahuwah, um, Elohim. So if I slip into that, I do. And we call Jesus Yeshua. So if I slip into those words while I'm talking, just understand that. God gave man Torah. He said, here's the left and right limits of where you are to exist. Do these things, don't do these things, and you're good with me. Um, Yeshua, Jesus said, if you love me, what? If you love me, what? Keep my commandments. Well, who's Yeshua? Who's Jesus? He is God made man in the flesh, right? I and the Father are one, said Yeshua. We are Echad, which is another whole teaching. We are one. Um, I only give the things my Father gives me to speak. Um, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. We can read Malachi, I am the Lord. The Lord, when you read it in the uh, King James uh, Old Testament, in all caps, the Lord is Yahweh, Yahweh. Uh, so I am Yahweh, I change not. He doesn't change. Uh, when you read Torah, it, it, many times you will see, do this forever. Do this as long as there's a sun and a sky. Do this throughout all your generations, you know, do, do it forever. It hasn't ended. Yeshua himself, Jesus himself said, I, I didn't come to change the law. I came to fulfill it. So we keep Torah. We try. Only one person has ever perfectly kept Torah. And that was Yeshua, Jesus Christ. He's the only one who ever, he kept it perfectly. Um, man, I got a lot to say on this one. I'll, I'll probably be bouncing around a little bit. So we do it because God wants us to. How about that? He's our father. He said, this is the rules of my house. This is how you live. So we try and behave. As a saved Christian, I know that I'm saved by grace and not by works. Uh, for by grace are ye saved, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God and not of works, lest any man should boast. You're saved by grace. Through what? Through faith. Show me your faith without works. Oh, oh. Saved by grace through faith. Show me your faith without works. We are saved. Let's get this very clear. 
And, and to put it in worldly, kind of easily understood terms for people, we get to heaven. What did Jesus say? What did Yeshua say? No one comes unto the Father but by me. You can only get there through Yeshua, through Jesus Christ. And you didn't deserve squat when he died for your sins. You didn't deserve nothing. That's what makes it grace. He died for you undeserving. You didn't deserve it. And so through him, we can get to heaven. We can come to the Father through Yeshua. Well, what did Yeshua say? If you love me, keep my commandments. No king but Jesus. Well, if he's your king, why don't you follow the rules that he lays down? Yeah, if you really consider him your king, why don't you do what he says? Why don't you not do what he says not to do? Oh, see, there's that. Yes, we're saved by grace. Absolutely. No one is earning their way uh, into heaven by keeping Torah because you've already failed. Romans 5, if you read Romans 5, there's a whole lot in there about grace, right? And, and how this, this grace is just coming down. Grace flows down on me. I love it, right? I love it. Um, unmerited favor. It flows down on us. It's awesome. We love it. Praise the Father for it. Thank you so much for your grace. Go to chapter 6 of Romans, and we see Paul says, he asks a question, and he says, what should we say then? Should we sin that grace may abound? Which means, yeah, we're saved from our sin by the grace of God. Should we then sin more? Should we commit more sins so that we get more of this awesome grace? I mean, I love this grace, so should I sin more so I get more grace? Well, he answers his own question in the very next line. He goes, God forbid, Yah forbid. Hell no, you don't sin more so you get more grace. So where, where was this? Oh, well, I'll get to that part. So, okay, and I think the average Christian um, would agree. No, we shouldn't sin more so that we get more grace. And, and the average Christian probably knows we're saved by grace. So should we sin more so we get more grace? No. Okay, so then the question becomes, average Christian, what's sin? If we're not supposed to sin, God forbid you sin so that you get more grace, what is sin? It's missing the mark, PJ. What is sin? What's the mark? What is sin? Because we're not supposed to do it. God forbid you sin. Well, the answer in one place, it's actually in two places, but my go-to is 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. 1 John 3, 4. What is sin? Go there and look at it. What is sin? Answers the question. Sin is transgression of the law. Sin is breaking the law, breaking the law, breaking the law. What law do you think John is talking about? Do you think he's talking about Roman law? Do you think he's talking about U.S. code? Do you think he's talking about Adolf Hitler's law? No. He's talking about the law, Torah. Sin is breaking Torah. Torah defines what sin is. Torah given to us by the Father. Here's what you do, here's what you don't do. If you do what I told you not to do, you're sinning. If you don't do what I told you to do, you're sinning. Should we sin so we get more grace? Y'all forbid. No. So quit sinning, which means start keeping Torah. I've said before, I've got a video somewhere, uh, the scariest bit of scripture. And these people come to Yeshua, Jesus, and they say, um, you know, what's it going to be like in the end? Meaning end times when he comes back, right? They may not know that that's what they're asking, but that's what he's answering. And he says, many will come to me in that day. And I'm paraphrasing here a little bit. Uh, many will come to me in that day, in that day, that last day. And they'll say, Lord, Lord. And that means master, master. No king but Jesus. He's my master. I'm a slave to Jesus. Many will come to me in that day and they'll say, Lord, Lord, in your name. While you were gone, in the name of Jesus, we did all these cool things. We healed the sick. We raised the dead. We cast out demons. We did all these mighty works in your name, Yeshua. 
what they're trying to present to Yeshua is, hey, while you've been gone, we've been about your business. Uh, we've been faithful. We have been, they're calling him master. It's not a fake master. They, they, they consider him in their mind, their master, master, master. And, and they're laying out what they've done while he's gone, now that he's back. And what they're expecting is for him to pat them on the head and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Good job. You did a good job, little Johnny. But instead, Yeshua says, get away from me. I never knew you. You workers of iniquity. That is not a pat on the head and well done, my good and faithful servant. That is a final body slam. That is equivalent to, I will spew you out of my mouth, which we read elsewhere. Get away from me. I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. He's not talking about rapists and murderers and, you know, drug dealers and stuff like that. These are people who think they were acting in his name. He didn't say, oh, you're so full of crap. You never cast out any demons in my name. You never healed anybody. In my he doesn't say that. He doesn't say, you don't consider me your master. He doesn't say that. He says, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. Who are they? They're workers of iniquity. What is iniquity? Lawlessness. Lawlessness. Get away from me, you workers of lawlessness. Get away from me, you workers of Torahlessness. Get away from me, you people who don't keep Torah. You're not even trying. Get away from me. I don't know you. Next. It's too late then. It's too late then. And I think that's horrible. I, I, that, that's a sad bit of scripture for me. Um, Revelations 12. My Bible's in the other room. Revelations 12. Is it 13, Kate? Revelation 12, 13. These are those, it, it's talking about the woman. I'm, I think it's 12, 13. It's somewhere in there. Um, it's talking about the woman in Revelation now who flees to the wilderness to a place prepared for her by Yah. The woman, of course, if, if you study, it doesn't matter who you are. Christians know this too. If you study Revelation now, the woman represents the church. The believers, the elect, those who are making it in the end days. Are there a whole lot of them? Are there millions of them? No. I mean, we hear another parable that Yeshua gives about, you know, wide is the way and high is the gate that leads to destruction and many be that go therein thereat. But uh, straight is the way and narrow is the gate. Or no, narrow is the way and straight is the gate that uh, leads basically to, to the father and few be that find it. So in the end, there's only a few people who are going to make it. And it's like 12, 13, 12, 17, somewhere in there. It said, um, these are they that it's talking about the children of the woman, but it's the people who are making it in the end days when the whole world is in chaos. And it's only these people left this nucleus left. And it says they keep the commandments of God and in King James, and have a testimony of Jesus Christ. They keep the commandments of God and, and, and have a testimony of Jesus Christ. Do Baptists have a testimony of Jesus Christ? I would submit all things being equal, they do. Do they keep, do they keep the commandments of God? No. No. They don't. Do Orthodox Jews keep the commandments of God. Meaning, are they trying? Again, no one has perfectly kept them, and we know we're saved by grace, not works. So it's it's not dependent on that, but do they keep the commandments of God? Yeah, they try. Do they have a testimony of Jesus Christ? Nope, they don't. Guess what? They're not making it. They're not there. It's both. Keep the commandments of God, have a testimony of Jesus Christ. If you love me, he said, keep my commandments. 
Christians will throw out there, yeah, that's just the, the two commandments, love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your might, and love your neighbor as yourself. No, because they don't understand the Bible they read and preach from. Ask any Jew, okay, how do we sum up Torah in two commandments? Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy might, and love thy neighbor as thyself. And Yeshua himself even said, on this hangs all the law and the prophets. Meaning these two, because the guy was trying to trick him into only giving him one. And, and Yeshua, you're not going to trick him. And he said, no, on these two commandments hangs all the law and the prophets. He doesn't say these two commandments replace it. It means everything in Torah is either about worshiping Yah or being cool to your fellow man. Being obedient. If you love your father, you do what he tells you to do, right? So, now let me get back to some of these particulars. As a saved Christian, I know that I'm saved by grace and not by works. Yeah, one is saved by grace and not by works. But if you're not doing the work, you don't have faith. And therefore, uh, you're not saved. I know. Sounds, I know. Think about it. Many times I've wanted to follow the law, Torah. But... Some of that law also includes not wearing shirts of mixed fabric. Right. So don't do it. Don't wear a garment that is uh, linen and wool in one garment. Why? Well, are you a parent? Most of y'all are probably parents or have been, you know. How many times have you told your kid, your child, your progeny? How many times have you told them? Because I said so. Don't have time to explain it all to you now because I said so. Now get out. On the basis, hey, he said don't do it, so don't do it. Well, he, no, he said don't do it. Don't do it. He said don't eat pork. Don't do it. So why follow some of it if I cannot follow all of it, especially when it doesn't affect my salvation? Oh, but it does your attitude that affects your salvation yeah because you're not following Yeshua with a bad attitude hey it's not just saying you know I believe that Jesus Christ was you know born of a virgin lived a perfect and sinless life died sinless by the way means he kept Torah um, died for my sins is now sitting at the right hand of the father dun, 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 and he's coming back someday soon to judge the quick and the dead the dead and the alive the alive and the dead. That doesn't make you saved. Satan knows all of that. Satan would agree with you on that. He knows who Yeshua is. He would agree with you on all of that. Does that mean Satan's saved? Come on. It's not just verbal assent. If you believe, if you have faith, your works will follow. What are your works? Your works are keeping Torah. That's your works. How should I keep the law if I can't keep all of it? It's like this. Uh, I've heard this analogy before. You get caught speeding. You're going 90 miles an hour in a 35 mile an hour zone. Boop, boop. They pull you over. They write you a ticket and probably going that fast, take you to jail, right? You go before the court and the judge is sitting up there and the judge says, I tell you what, I'm in a really good mood today. You are clearly speeding way too fast in a 35 mile an hour zone, but it's a good day. I'm letting you off scot-free today. You have just been saved from your sin by the grace of that judge. So, should you go out and sin some more? Should you go out and speed tomorrow? Hey, he didn't, he didn't get me that time. I'll go do it again. It doesn't matter. Or I won't follow any traffic laws anymore. It, it doesn't matter. No, God forbid. No. You do the best you can with what you got where you're at. You try to keep Torah. And when you fail... Not because you didn't care, not because you're just like, well, it's too, it's too difficult today. I'm not going to do it. But when you screw up and forget or have an honest lapse, we have forgiveness through Yeshua, through Jesus. 
But that is not an excuse for you to ignore the law. Now, here's another thing. It said, if I can't keep all of it, why should I try and keep some of it? Because my salvation is not dependent on it. You cannot keep all the law. You can't. Because here's the deal. And I'm, I'm, I'm painting with a broad brush here. There are a lot of the 613, which is not very many. You have more municipal codes than that in the town you live in. There are many of those rules, if you will, parts of Torah, parts of the law, that apply only to the priesthood or to the temple or to the temple service. There is no physical temple. There is no longer, a, we have one high priest, you know, ever after the order of Melchizedek, Yeshua, right? Um, there is no, so those laws, when it says, you know, the high priest has to dress like this and wear this and do this, those are all commands. Well, we don't have that. So you don't need to worry about that. You, you can't keep that. You're not the high priest. Yeah, so you can't keep that. There are many rules that apply just for women. Well, if you're a man, I assume Dave is, uh, those don't apply to you. So you don't have to worry about those. You only have to worry about the ones that apply to men and then the general ones. Same thing with women. They don't have to do the ones that apply to men. They're not a man. Um, but you're supposed to try and keep them. If you love me, keep my commandments, said Jesus. Who's Jesus? God made man in the flesh. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the creator of the universe. He is God. God gave these commandments. <laughs> if you love him, keep his commandments. Um, hold on, is there another one in here? Because I have another thing I want to say. So it does affect your uh, salvation. What is it? Romans 11, I think. Romans 11, it describes, many Christians are familiar with this imagery. They just don't quite understand it. It talks about the tree and, and describing, Yeshua is describing an olive tree, an olive tree. And he said, here's this olive tree. And uh, if some of these branches were broken off of the olive tree, and when Yeshua talks about breaking off of branches, what does he say happens? You cast them into the fire and you burn them up, right? And he says, he doesn't say it in that one, but he says it elsewhere. So some of these branches are broken off the olive tree. Why? Because of their unbelief is what he says. And, you know, so they're, they're broken off because of their unbelief. And other branches, he's talking to you, Gentile, uh, were grafted in from the wild olive tree. Don't you boast against those branches I broke off. Because if I broke them off and put you in, I can break you off and put them back. So don't be getting all uppity. You ask the average uh, relatively knowledgeable Christian about that parable, and they will tell you, that the Jews rejected Jesus, they didn't have belief, and so they were no longer God's chosen people, hence broken off the tree. And the Gentiles, who accepted Jesus Christ as Messiah, they are now God's chosen people, and they're grafted into the tree. And in that, they're basically correct. However, they miss the forest for the trees. What's the tree? What is the tree? Well, Pastor Joe, it's an olive tree. Yeah, in the story, it's an olive tree, but it's a parable. So what does the olive tree represent from whence these branches were broken off and others grafted in, this olive tree? It's Israel. It's Israel, not the nation state in the Middle East. Israel, Yah's God's chosen people. He chose Israel because they're this weak little slave tribe, you know, under hard, heavy, harsh burden of the Egyptians to show how great he was. I will make a great people out of these people, out of nothing. And that's why he chose Israel. And there's other reasons, but that, that's good enough for the story. The tree is Israel. They, Yeshua said, I come not but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yeshua's only coming for Israel. He only cares about Israel. And again, Israel is a people. It's a people. Now, at one time, that people was a blood people from Jacob, Israel. He has 12 sons. They all have people. Those were God's chosen people. And also, people could be brought into the tribe. That's another whole teaching. But generally speaking, 
people of the blood. Well, after Yeshua, if you don't believe in Yeshua, and all of the early followers of Yeshua were Israelites, bloodborn Jews, they were broken off, and I'm grabbing these other people who follow Yeshua. Well, they're now Israel. And if you're now Israel, you have to abide by the rules of Israel. Because if you're not Israel, you don't count and you don't matter. I know that's harsh. Well, guess what? Anybody can become Israel. So it's still fair. If you want to be Israel, be Israel. So yeah, if you're not keeping the commandments, if you're not keeping Torah, it doesn't matter what you think, what you feel, what you believe, uh, you're not. And you're not saved. Oh, I know. It hits harsh. But I figured this is the Shofar Mountain Channel, and if you want religious discussion, I'm going to give it to you straight from the shoulder. Um, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's what he said. Keep his commandments. These are they who keep the commandments of God and have a testimony of Jesus Christ. Faith without works is dead. Sin is transgression of the law. Stop transgressing his law. Get straight. Go through the straight gate in the narrow way. That's what I pray for you. It's not too late. You can fix your path that you're on. All right. Y'all bless.